Supposing you had the chance to get rid of some of your worst nightmares, what would they be? My guest is here tonight to persuade me to banish the items on his list to Room 101. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome Rich Hall! <laughs> What a lovely... How are you, Paul? What a treat to be here. You're an American, I believe. That's correct, Paul. Which would you... Yes, I am. Sorry. <laughs> I'm almost Canadian. I live about 100 miles from the Canadian border. So whereabouts do you live? Montana. Uh-huh. Very flat. <laughs> Wonderfully flat. You can watch your dog run away for three days. <laughs> That's very flat. Sit on the porch and watch him go. So, let's, let's have a look at your first uh, choice of Room 101. Um, right. OK. Um, you're familiar with the concept, of course, of Room 101. Yes, it's things that have to do with the number 101 that you hate. <laughs> yes, this, you're, you're kind of there. This would you're be the molecular there. structure of Mendelevium, yep. which is the 101st element. <laughs> It's a very anorexic puppy, if you think yeah. of it. <laughs> well, actually, you can, you can make yeah. more of a puppy out of it if you, yeah. if you pull that off there. <laughs> and, uh, let's see, turn, turn that round. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, make him a male. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, OK. If he had three testicles, I suppose. <laughs> right there. Yeah. So, it's, as you say, it's element 101 in the periodic table. It is the first element. And um, has anybody in this room ever worked with Mendelevium? <laughs> That's what I thought. Now, <laughs> see, that's the thing. It's, it's a completely useless element. Any, any of the elements past 100 are, are, are not found in nature. Mm -hmm. And I believe Mendelevium is made by bombarding helium with an uh, electron particle. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got it. You mentioned the periodic yeah. table here, which I've got. I've got. Now, mm -hmm. these are all the various elements in the periodic table. But the one that you're, you're particularly keen on, Mendelevium, right. I think you'll find hasn't even got a picture. Yeah. <laughs> So what is the point? That what there, is the okay. point of these last hundred? These from 101 to 105, they don't even exist. No. <laughs> it was named after a man named Mendeleev, and I think he just invented it so he could get his name in the periodic charts, yeah. you know. Let me just get rid of this. Were you, um, <laughs> were you any good at science at school? Um, no, not really. Uh, aside from dissecting frogs, which is always fun. Uh -huh. But I, I didn't have a lot of money in our school, and it was... Instead of using an anesthetic, we just had to put a little nail in its head and it would, it would knock it out. So, uh, it's just... Science, to me, should be something usable, mm -hmm. right? Um, so this is really inapplicable science, is what you're saying in the end. It's yeah. science, it doesn't mean anything to us. Yeah, I guess pointless science. Pointless science, you know. yeah, yeah. Or pointless research in general, I suppose, you know. It, it's difficult, really, isn't it? Because they sort of, a couple of years ago, somebody had worked out the weight of the Earth. Exactly. So Somebody in, uh, there was a guy in Seattle. Was it? Yeah, that was a three-year project. The guy spent three years weighing the planet. Why? <laughs> I think it's probably the kind of experiment they give you if you're just a crap scientist. Mm. Yeah. Well, so a lot of beakers all over the lab floor there. And they, oh, don't worry about this, Fred. We'll clean it up. Why don't you nip out and weigh the planet? <laughs> <laughs> and he did. Now, black holes is another thing, of course. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. Do you understand them? No. It, it's very difficult to understand because the scientists tell us they're there, but yeah. um, what, what, are, what we're meant to do about that, change our clothes or comb our exactly. hair a different way, yeah. I don't know. But so we've got a scientist here describing black holes. See if this makes it any clearer. Really, until five years ago, they were just considered oddities, you know, very exotic curiosities and certainly fascinating, but are really no consequence. And now we know that that is not true. Supermassive black holes are really the fundamental uh, constituent of galaxies, and they have to be taken into account. Isn't she just taking the piss out of Stephen Hawking? Yeah. <laughs> oh. I mean, he can't help it, poor sod. <laughs> They, they are, they're meant to be this fascinating phenomenon. They're obviously fascinating to scientists, but uh, maybe if we knew the effect of black holes on the human frame, we might not be quite so blasé. You may not have heard of, show, of a show called Blake Seven, but it was like, like our version of Star Trek, but with a much bigger budget. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Straight heading. 
She seems to be having a good time, yeah. though. Yeah, I'm get some copies of that. But I mentioned Stephen Hawking there earlier, and uh, did you ever buy his book, A, a Brief History of Time? It's, it's famously one of the best-selling, uh, most unread books ever. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, everybody who's ever tried to read it got about halfway through, and then, yeah, yeah. ironically, ran out of time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But he's done this book which is a bit more accessible. I'll just show it to the camera for you. This is Stephen Hawking's um, book of pub games. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's the sort of thing that would appeal to you. Oh. So, I mean, they spent zillions of pounds exploring deep space and they've sent men to the moon. Did you watch the original uh, moon landings when they first happened? Were you there watching when yes. Ar Neil Armstrong landed on the moon? Yeah, I mean, that was the last exciting thing that happened. But then, what have we done since then? I mean, nothing. <laughs> Apparently, uh, a few... Years ago, they discovered that the universe is six times bigger than we thought it was. <laughs> but isn't it meant to understand that? Isn't it meant to stretch into infinity anyway? The universe is infinite. Yeah. So it's like saying, hey, you know, you could imagine how big the universe was. Now it's six times more unimaginable <laughs> than you could imagine in the first place. Now name one person that that helps, aside from uh, Miss Universe. Other than her. You know, doesn't really help her yeah. that much, really, does it? I guess she's six times lovelier than we thought she was. <laughs> but it doesn't help you or me. No, no. Well, so, I think, you know, you've, you've persuaded me. There's no doubt about it. It's definitely going into Room 101. Bye-bye.